The clarinet is often uh, referred to as the instrument that most emulates the voice. For me, the clarinet is my voice. Uh, when I perform, I believe that I'm giving a part of myself that I would not be able to give with words. Michelle uses her voice to help children in Tanzania discover the clarinet, an instrument born from the local African blackwood tree, or Mpingo tree. During the summer, the New York State native embarks on an overseas journey for her nonprofit Clarinets for Conservation. What's fascinating about the clarinet having its birth from the Mpingo tree, the national tree of Tanzania, is that the instrument is virtually unknown in the place where it is born. So we're hoping through this education program and bringing the clarinets back to their place of birth that maybe a new style, a new culture of clarinet playing will come out of this program. The money raised from concerts like this one in Saratoga Springs, New York, helps keep clarinets for conservation going. Initially though, the program had trouble getting off the ground. In fact, it almost didn't come to life at all. My first experience in Tanzania was scary, <laughs> it was intimidating, uh, and I don't think that I prepared myself for it in the way that maybe I should have. I, uh, I tend to go on a whim, and in this case I did. I bought a, a plane ticket for Dar es Salaam, and I flew in in the middle of the night with two suitcases filled with clarinets, and uh, I, I knew that I would have someone picking me up and that I was uh, working for, with a, uh, an NGO of Tanzania. Uh, as, it, as it turned out, this NGO is not a legitimate NGO. They, I ended up losing all of my money. They did put me up in a house, but uh, it was very, very intimidating to show up uh, in Africa at two o'clock in the morning and have people everywhere uh, of another culture speaking and speaking Swahili, just rushing around and even more intimidating. She had to travel 11 hours by bus with no idea how to read the street signs to meet her other contact from the African Blackwood Conservation Project. I just kept saying it's going to have to be okay. <laughs> I didn't really have a choice in the matter. So Once she made it to Moshi. They drove around meeting with schools to find somewhere to teach. Keep in mind, none of these people have ever seen or heard the clarinet. After a few days of searching, they found home for the music program at Korogoni Secondary School, where they still teach today. Yeah, it's beautiful sound, beautiful sound. Most of the students spoke English. The few that couldn't had help from older, stronger English-speaking students. The first couple times we played, there, there was definitely a lot of giggling. It was almost almost like a sideshow because it was something so strange and they never heard anything like that. I mean, this is the first time that they're seeing uh, the clarinet. This is the first time they're learning to read music. I, I can say that there's nothing in my life that has been more awesome and more powerful than to see the look in these students' eyes when they realize what they can create. All of the clarinets are donated, and then each plane ticket has to be bought by the traveling musician. A new member to the education team will be making her first trip to Tanzania at the end of June. Last year only two teachers went, and this year six are going. And so this is huge. We're already drastically increasing our numbers. Catherine recently finished a thesis for her master's in ethnomusicology. You will often hear that music is a universal language, which we can't really say because Music in different cultures sounds drastically different to different people, but I think that what we can say is that music is an international language. And so from my traveling and my teaching, I've been amazed and astonished by the ways that people have been able to communicate through music. And it's really exciting to see this communication happening. And it doesn't seem to matter where I go, the music speaks for itself almost. So I had a student, Esther, uh, she came running into class one day and she had her clarinet and uh, she said, my grandmother is sick and I've been going home at night and playing the clarinet for her and she loves it and it makes her feel well. She said, and I, I know these hymns that I, I sing at church. Can you teach me how to play these hymns on the clarinet so that I can play them? for my grandmother. And 
that was pretty awesome to see such a connection to the instrument that the students wanted to take what they already knew with their own voices and bring it out of the voice of the clarinet. She says the focus that can be found by learning an instrument parallels anything we do in life. She'll be using that philosophy to teach when she goes back to Tanzania this May. What you put into it, you get back out. We have a full circle approach of learning to not only respect the product, respect the powerful musical product, but to respect the place from which it is born. So there, yes, they are learning music on these clarinets and they're also planting the impingo tree, the tree of which the instrument is made. Last year, our students planted uh, 500 trees and those trees, uh, when they're fully mature and harvested, will be worth over $1 million. So uh, they're investing in their own futures too with the planting of these trees. While they know of this tree, they have no idea what it's used for. Even in non-musical ways, this tree is exported, all this money is going into it, and they have no idea. And I think that the clarinet serves as a really powerful springboard to open up the door for that conversation because it gives the students, not only giving them the opportunity in the arts that they don't have, but it also allows us to talk about conservation and sustainability and the other things that the tree is used for. So while this is a music education program, it's the starting point for the entire conversation.